let's review it real quick. Um, we had this try block where we're, we're processing the files and then we're catching any exceptions that can occur if the file is not found or if there's an issue accessing the disk, we have to, this IO exception. But no matter what happens here, whether there's an error or whether there's no error, we need this finally block to always run. That's the uh, reason why finally exists. It's there to be able to close resources uh, so that you know we don't have memory leaks in our application. So if we have a buffered reader up here, we need to make sure that we close it. And that, that's why we need this finally block. If there's an error, we need this finally block to run. If there's no error, we still need this finally block to run because we need to close the resources. And in the previous lecture, I missed something very important. We're closing the buffered reader, but what about the file reader? This is another resource, right? This also needs to be closed. So let's do that. If I do um, file reader dot close, uh, of course, this variable is not accessible in this scope. This variable, this file reader is defined in the try block, right? So that's not accessible in the finally or other brackets. We can't access it in other brackets, right? So it needs to be defined in a higher scope. Just like we did buffered reader, we defined it up here. We need to define this file reader up there as well. So let's take that variable and put it up there outside of the try and assign it the value of null to start with. And so since we're defining it up here, we don't need to redefine it in the try. So we're just going to get rid of the definition of it. And we're just assigning uh, the file reader object to this variable. And so now we're able to close it. Now, we can have problems with one of these being null or both of these being null. So I had this uh, null pointer exception. You do not want to try this, okay? You don't want to be using null pointer exceptions. Typically, a programmer should be aware of what could possibly be null. So this is actually a, a bad practice that I kind of uh, used in the previous lecture. And I wanted to show you the usage of this um, so that if you see it, you can change it. I don't like this and nor should you. Uh, you should know what areas of your code could possibly run into null pointer exceptions. So these buffered reader and the file reader could possibly be null if something happens in the try block, right? If there's an error, it's going to jump into the catch. And then in the finally, everything here is going to run. And so buffered reader needs to close, file reader needs to close. But if these variables are not assigned anything, then they're null, right? As we've defined them up there outside of the try block, they could be null. And so how could we close something that is null, right? We can't invoke methods on null objects. So, uh, you know, we needed this null pointer exception, but I don't like this. Let me show you a, a better way uh, of handling null pointer exceptions first, and then I'm going to show you a newer technique of handling all of this. So let's get rid of that null pointer exception, and I could just have an if block, um, and then say if buffered reader is not null, right? Only if it's not null, then we can close it. If it's null, then that means that buffered reader was never uh, created, right? And so we won't need to close it because, you know, it was never in initiated. But if it's not null, then that means something was assigned to it. So we better make sure we close that resource. So the same thing goes for the file reader. Let me do the same thing right here and change this to file reader. And so I'm going to close the file reader inside of that. If it's not null, then that means that file reader must have had some value. So it was a resource that was being utilized. We better close that resource. So this is the official, you know, the correct way before uh, Java version 7 to work with files. But Java version 7 and onwards, there was a new syntax that was introduced. And that's called try with resources. And the beauty of that is that you don't need this finally block, right? Again, what's the purpose of this finally block? It's to make sure that it always runs. If there's an exception, we want this finally block to run. If there's no exception, we still need this finally block to run. So the new syntax that was introduced in Java 7, try with resources, makes the Java code less verbose. You don't need the finally block. And uh, the ability to close files is taken care of automatically, all right? We don't have to specifically close the resources that are involved. All we have to do is use the try uh, with resources syntax, 
and it automatically is able to close the uh, resources for us without the need of this finally block. So let me show you how to do that. So it's as simple as going to the try block, right? And putting parentheses and inside of the parentheses would define the resources that we need, right? We need the file reader. So let me take that and dump that into the try block. And we also need the buffered reader. So I'm going to take that and put it into the try block as well. Let's put this on the next line. And we need to define the data types of these two variables, file reader as well as the buffered reader, inside of the try block. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, file reader. And I'm going to do the same thing for buffered reader. So we're defining these variables in here as well as assigning them the resources required. And so we don't need these variables defined up here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and notice this uh, file reader resource is being passed into the argument of this buffered reader, uh, which is defined within this try, uh, you know, container inside of these parentheses, we need to declare both of these variables and assign them on the particular resource. And so now this file reader as well as the buffered reader is available inside of this try block, right throughout this try block. Now the beauty of this is that we do not need to close any of these uh, resources. We don't need to close the file reader and we don't need to close the buffered reader. Try with resources automatically closes these resources. So we don't need the finally block anymore either. So let me get rid of that. And then so in here, we of course don't need the buffered reader anymore. Uh, we're, we're declaring it as well as assigning it inside of that try block. And notice how much more succinct the code has become. We don't have to worry about closing these resources. These are going to be closed by Java itself automatically. We don't need to do that specifically. That's the beauty of the try with resources. Now you might be wondering, how is it able to do that automatically? Well, this is possible because of Java 7 features. This is, this is a new feature that Java 7 uh, included. You try to do this in Java 6 or before, it's not going to work. This only works in Java 7 onwards. And what they did was any class that implements uh, an interface known as auto closable can be used in this try with resources block. So I'll prove it to you. If you go to the file reader class definition, let's go there. Notice that it extends the input stream reader. Let's click on that. And notice that this class extends the reader. So let's go to that parent. The reader implements two interfaces, the readable interface and the closable interface. Now if you go to the closable interface, Notice that this interface extends another interface, okay? And that is auto closable. Now you might be new to this, but notice that we can extend interfaces. We had this closable interface that has just one method in there called close, okay? And this extends something called auto closable. And this is the uh, granddaddy of anything that's closable. It needs to be auto closable. And notice the author, Josh Bloch, he introduced this interface in Java 1.7. And so um, if you hover your mouse onto auto closable, it says an object that may hold resources such as a file or socket handle until it is closed. The close method of an auto closable object is called automatically, okay, automatically when exiting a try with resources block. So the try with resources block was included as part of Java 1.7. And you can see the version that uh, has this update, Java 1.7 onwards, the auto closable interface allows things to be auto closed uh, when used with the try with resources block. So if we go to, uh, let's close this, if you type control T while your mouse is on auto closable, you'll notice that it brings up all of the uh, classes that are implementing this interface. And we got the file system, file tree iterator, uh, the input stream, output stream, all of these classes, there's a bunch of them. They all implement the closable interface because they have the close method. And so since they implement the closable interface, and that means they're also, they're also inheriting the behavior of the auto closable. And so since auto closable is going to help close things automatically when used with the try with resources block, all of those classes, Let's open them up again, Control T. 
all of these classes are auto closable when the uh, try with resources block is used. So you don't have to specifically call the close method on any of these guys. Okay, so it makes the syntax definitely a lot more reader friendly and you know just easier to work with. So let me close uh, these extra classes that I've got opened. So moving forward, if you see older code, um, you know that was written in Java six, and you're able to upgrade to Java seven, uh, you'll find that it's pretty straightforward to modify that code to work with try resources. You just have to take those resources and dump them into these parentheses of the try uh, statement. And then you won't need to use the finally block. You could just eliminate the finally block completely if all it's doing is closing the resources that are auto closable. Okay, so this is new syntax that I wanted to show you. It's pretty straightforward. It actually will make your life easier if you do it like this rather than trying to figure out all of the scenarios that can happen when one of these objects is null and you have to close something and you have to check for whether it's null or not before you can close it. This makes uh, programming in Java a lot easier. I really like this feature, and you should be using it if you are uh, using Java 7 onwards. Another thing worth mentioning is that these classes, first of all, file reader and buffered reader, and I showed you all of those different classes that implement auto closable, you can use them with the try with resources block as we're doing here. But you can create your own classes that implement the auto closable interface, okay? And so those classes will be auto closable too. So you can use them in this try with resources block without needing to use the finally block. Okay, let me prove it to you. Let's create a class. I'm going to create a new class here. Let's just call it uh, application two. And uh, it's going to also have the uh, main method in there. It's going to be a separate thing that we're going to test out. So outside of this application, if I create another class, we'll call it uh, my class doesn't matter what you name it. I just want to implement uh, the auto closable interface like we're doing here. Okay. And I think I misspelled auto closable. So I just need an E. And now uh, we of course need to implement the method in auto closable. Hover your mouse and it's going to ask us to add unimplemented method. So let me click on that. And this is that method that this class is supposed to uh, implement. So my class could be uh, you know, it could be going to the internet, connecting to the database, doing all sorts of things, but uh, eventually we'd like it to close, so we implement the auto closable interface and we'd like to be able to use this uh, instances of this class. We'd like to be able to close those uh, resources uh, automatically using the try with resources. And so that is the reason why I implemented auto closable. So we must, uh, you know, have some kind of close. Uh, functionality. Let's say this goes to the internet, forms a network connection, and then forms a database connection. We need to close those network connections as well as those database connections. Um, all that closing behavior should be inside of this close method for our class. So I'm just going to keep it simple and just say that um, it's going to say closing. Okay. So I could use this with the try with resources block. I could do try and then declare an instance of my class. So I could say my class and uh, the variable for this class, we'll just call it var because we're just sort of testing this out. And uh, it's going to be an instance of my class just like that. And then we need the open and close brackets of the try. So now we're using the try with resources functionality here. Now there's some red line uh, under our variable. Hover your mouse is saying unhandled exception thrown by automatic close invocation. So we need to handle this exception. So we could just say add throws declaration or we can add a catch clause to surrounding try. So let's do that. Let's add the catch clause. And you might be wondering why is it throwing this exception? Well, let's go to the auto closable interface and go down to the close method and notice that the close method just throws an exception. So when we're implementing this method in our class, we have to handle this exception. And there's no specific exception, it's just a general you know, exception, which is the parent of all exceptions. So this is how the try with resources block works. Um, if we want to create our own classes and we want those classes to be auto-closable, want to make sure we implement the auto-closable interface and define our own implementation for what close means for our own class. We haven't covered databases yet, but this, you know, this class could be connecting to a database, making queries. We'll look at all that later. But basically the idea is that we would like to close all of those resources 
and we can make that part of this close method. Whatever close means for our class, we would do that here. Now in our example, we're just doing a simple thing by printing the fact that this uh, resource is closing. That's all we're doing here inside of the body of this uh, close method. So when we run this uh, code, it's going to execute this try with resource. This var uh, object is the resource, and it's automatically going to be closed because this close method is going to be called by this try with resources uh, functionality. So let's run this class. I'm going to right click and go to run as Java application and notice that it printed closing. I could have a finally block here, um, even though I don't need it, but you know, you can still use it with this try with resources uh, syntax, but then of course we don't need to close it. We, we don't need to do var.close uh, here because that's done automatically. And by the way, we don't even have access to var uh, in the finally block because that's actually accessible in the try block. Okay, this variable var is only accessible in the try block not in the finally. So that's why it's erroring out. It's saying var cannot be resolved. But anyway, as you can see, you don't need uh, the finally block anymore. And 99.9% .9 of the time, we use finally to close resources, and that's no longer required in Java 7 onwards. But anyway, we covered a lot of ground in this video. Sorry if it's a little long, but uh, hopefully this was a good review of exception handling as well as understanding the try with resources statement, which we wrote right here, and how it works and behind the scenes of why it works. And uh, as you can see, it's all about auto-closable. This was included in Java 7, and this allows us to use it with try with resources block without having to specifically close resources. Anyway, let me wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture.